all parts of a golden chain are highly toxic. Highly toxic. Okay? So, now, you know, that's fine. You're not going around, you're not munching on the leaves or the seeds of golden chains. However, if you do have small children around, just be cognizant of the fact that the little seeds that are in a golden chain look almost like little beans or little peas. They are highly toxic. Okay? So, just something to keep in mind. There's lots of plants we grow in our gardens that are highly toxic. This is only one of many. We probably have heard of the monk's hood because there was a young gentleman back, I yes. guess it's probably 15, 20 years ago, that ate monk's hood and died within a few hours. Okay? And there was a lot of people coming here to the garden saying, get rid of your monk's hood because we have five or six different varieties here. It's a heritage plant in Newfoundland. It's been growing in Newfoundland for over 100 years. We're not getting rid of monk's hood. Okay? It's an education, that's what it's all about. We have lots of toxic plants out there. Monk soot got lots of got lots of press. Not so much press coming from the golden chains, but they're equally as toxic. In this area to bring to your attention. So any people who are regular visitors to the garden will know that this feature in front of me was only put in place last year. This is a very specialized type of rock garden called a crevice garden. And here you can see it's quite extreme in regards to being a garden on rock, all right? Um, it really is a garden on rocks. These rocks are all sort of slabs, in this case of limestone, and these are basically packed together almost like dominoes. And you just put one rock in, then we pack it with sand, then we put the next rock in, we pack it with sand, we put the next rock in. So we just continue on from one end to the other. The, I guess the flagstone or the cornerstone of this garden is actually this rock right here. This is the largest one in the garden. This rock extends from here right down to the level where, I, where my feet are. Okay, so it's a huge, it, was, it took three people to move that piece of rock, um, to put that there, and then from there on is where we sort of put out the garden from there. You look at this and you say, my gosh, how can plants grow in this? There's no place for soil. There's actually no soil in here. They're growing in almost 100% sand, all right? And if you ever get an opportunity to go up high in the mountains, a lot of the plants up there seem to be only growing in rock, okay, or crushed rock. And that's essentially what we're trying to recreate here. So this is probably the closest to recreating a true alpine habitat um, at a lower elevation, okay? Again, most of these plants are flowering early in the season, so they're gonna be in, in flower like in May and June, where it's just sort of catching the very tail end of the flowering season. These puffins originated from, um, uh, from Ontario. When Canada celebrated its 150th anniversary, in Gatineau, just across the Ottawa River, they had a huge, huge display called the uh, uh, Mosaic Culture. And <clears throat> they had humongous figurines. Some of them were like 10 and 12 and 15 feet high. And the bodies of these figurines were all covered in plants. Now, some, like I said, some were huge. In our case, um, they wanted to represent each province. So they contacted us and said, we're going, to, we're going to create a representation for Newfoundland that you will be able to house at your botanical garden. What would you like us to create? So I said to them, I want puffins. Because that's our provincial, provincial bird, right? Everyone loves puffins, right? They're so cute. So they created, I said, I want a puffin standing up. I actually had to do them in a sketch. And I do a little bit of, a little bit of drawing on the side. So I drew up a sketch of a, of a puffin standing up and one squat down on a rock and they recreated that. They actually added the capelin in the bill. I didn't ask them to do that, okay? So that was an added bonus, just to make it even, even more authentic, all right? So we've had these now for six or seven years, and if, each year we had to buy new plants, because these plants had to be imported. Uh, so they're coming in, I think actually from Quebec, and uh, they're planted out each year, because they're only annuals. So once we get a frost, the plants are dead. Uh, but then each year, we replace them, and we have a silver leaf plant, to represent the white portions of the, of the puffin, and we have a purple leaf plant to represent the black parts of their plumage. If you deadhead your rhododendron, um, that will encourage it to produce buds again for next year, okay? If you leave them, you can see there's actually seed pods forming here now, and if the plant produces seeds, its purpose in life is done. And it'll say, oh, I can take a breather, and then next year, I'm not gonna produce any flowers. If it doesn't get a chance to produce seed, then it's like, oh darn, I gotta produce seeds. That's my purpose in life. It'll encourage it to produce more buds again for next year, all right? 
This roadie had no flowers last year. This year, pretty much every sprout produced a flower. So it's probably going to take a break next year anyway. All right, but I will get in there. I will deadhead it. And I don't use pruners. I just put my fingers in there and the old flowers just snap right off. Easy peasy, okay? Simple. Now, meanwhile, this is another one of those rhododendrons that has the fuzzy leaves. Another different variety, okay? Very, very soft, even softer than the other one. And some people call them heirloom plants. We call them heritage plants here. And these are all old-fashioned varieties of plants that came from people's gardens, mostly in Outport and Philan, in some cases from my great-grandfather's garden uh, that existed across the road. But there are varieties of plants that have been growing in gardens here since before uh, the Second World War. So most of these plants date back at least 100 years or close to 100 years. Some of them date right back into the 1850s where we were able to actually document when those plants first arrived in Newfoundland. So all those plants came with the early settlers, primarily from Ireland and England, mostly in the middle, middle 1800s is when most of our ancestors uh, would have arrived here, would have immigrated from the UK uh, and the British Isles in Ireland. And when those people moved here, they were mostly coastal people. It was the potato famine was part of the reason they came here. Uh, others just decided they wanted to get away from that part of the world and start a new life in the new world. So they came over. They brought, of course, uh, all their goods, their, you know, their, their furniture and their beds and all that kind of stuff because you had to go by boat. It would take you several weeks to cross the North Atlantic. Spring was a lot earlier over there than it is here. Lots of storms for them to, uh, to uh, encounter. And of course, if they left over there in May or June, they arrived in the Philanta icebergs, because that's coming into our iceberg season, which they would have never seen icebergs before in that part of the world, okay? So it was a huge sh culture shock from them to move over there to here. Now, meanwhile, if you're a fisher person, then it's basically the same idea, right? The fish here was just as good, actually probably better at that stage than what it was in the UK, because it wasn't overfished at that point, all right? And of course, that's the main reason they came here was for the fishery. But they brought plants with them. And these are not edible plants, okay? They just brought plants. They had, it's not like, you know, you're hopping on a plane, you're here a couple of hours later. These were not grown from seed. They had to be grown as actual, they had to be plants that were actually transported to Newfoundland, stuck in a cardboard box for weeks on end, crossing the North Atlantic, if they dug them up over there in April, when they arrived here, you know, those plants can't stay in a box forever. They're gonna to start to grow, right? So no doubt, probably 90% of the plants died before they ever arrived here, but a few did survive. And these are the plants that we're seeing in front of us here now, the survivors. These are the tough, the tough guys, okay? Much like a lot of the people that settled in Newfoundland back in the 1800s, they were tough people. Um, so why did they bring these plants with them? They couldn't eat them. Basically, they were living souvenirs, yeah, right? Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a reminder of their homes back that they left. And where did we plant when the early settlers came to Newfoundland? Where did they plant most of these plants? Along the coast? In the cemeteries. Oh, wow. It was in the cemeteries, okay? Yeah. Because that's where their, their loved ones passed yeah. away. Yeah. And we plant this plant there because, oh my God, my grandmother loved this plant. Mm. And I'm gonna plant that, that flower in my garden. And of course, we're still doing that today, right? So that's nothing new in that regards. But that's just how important, even back 100 and 150 years ago, and probably going back much, much further than that, how important plants were to our lives overall, okay? And it's not like, you know, today, fine, we have spare moments, we have spare money, we can, you know, we can go out and buy plants, put in our gardens. People were sort of living from hand to mouth back in that era, right? So to go to that effort to bring those plants from the, from the old world into the new world really, really shows the connection that we have to gardens, okay? Wild roses. This here is a rose at Alba, and it's a variety called Maiden's Blush. It dates back into the early 1800s, okay? They only really romantic kind of names. They did, like back in the... Victorian yes, very yeah. much so, very much so, because that's the era yeah. that all these particular plants were, were developed at, the, at, at that stage. Mm -hmm. So, the story about the boys' love, I never told you the story on the boys' love, okay? So, back in the 18, early 1800s, mid-1800s, when the people moved over here, uh, that plant got called a boy's love. It's actually called Southern Wormwood is a proper name. Not a very romantic name, okay? Like, why do you want to grow in your garden? Wormwood. For the absinthe. 
It was absent, exactly, okay? So it was the absinthe plant, and of course it would make herbs liquor and stuff like that, and absinthe itself, which really messes your mind up it's if you ever drink that. It's a hallucinogenic form of alcohol. Yes, basically. there yeah. you go, right? So if you really want to have a wild drink, you drink a bit of absinthe. Okay, uh, I've tasted it, but I won't go any it further. Taste like much. No, it tastes actually tastes horrible. Yeah. But anyway, so be it. Anyway, we called it growing up here in Heritage, Newfoundland, boys love because oftentimes when the young ladies were sort of uh, meeting young boys and you know uh, going about the, the process of, of finding a mate and whatever, the young girls would often put a little um, cluster, a little uh, in their lapels, okay, or in their blouses of boys love. Because, of course, this is back before we had all sorts of perfumes that we could just sort of spray all over ourselves and colognes and all that. So they would use whatever nature had. That plant was so nicely fragrant that the young ladies would put that into their lapels or into their blouses, as they say, and the boys liked the smell of it. So the boy, it was called the boys' love. It was also actually used to repel uh, clothes moths as well. Okay, so they would dry little branches of that and put it in amongst their clothes to help keep the clothes moths um, away as well. Okay, so it was a plant that actually had a lot of uses. It was one of the few heritage plants that did, because most of the heritage plants were basically just grown purely for the color of the flowers. You're welcome. That was so enjoyable. Okay, Thank you so much. much.